Hey guys, Daryl Shergan, Quest for Vape. I am live. ST, are we live? <laughs> um, I'm sitting here at Vapeworks in Comac, New York. Just had their grand opening three weeks ago? No, actually grand opening was last week. Oh, I'm sorry. I was out of town, legit. Yep. I didn't blow you off. Uh, this place is gorgeous. This is by far the nicest build out, the nicest shop I've ever been in. This place feels like a nightclub. You guys want to take a look around? Hold on. Let me unplug. Let's take a little walk around. This this is phenomenal. It's worth it. First we have Grim, what's up? That's Matt Grim Eliottini. And then which way am I going? Jen. Sorry. Do you mind being on camera there, Jen? No, that's fine. This is Jen, one of the owners. Where's that doggy? Uh, <laughs> He's hiding. He's in bed. <laughs> so, there he is. There he is. <laughs> He's tiny but mighty. Can I get him? Now you see something's going on. Yes. You let everybody in YouTube land know they gotta behave themselves. These are dogs. Okay. Sorry about the contrast. So this is Vape Works. Oh look at this. Just in time we got we got vape mail coming. UPS hey, guy, FedEx. What's up, dude? Hey, man, how you doing? Always happy to see packages arriving. Right. Look at this place. Okay. Yep, feels like a nightclub. I made them turn off this waterfall over here because it was loud. Cool table. Okay. Kitchenette. Make yourself a cup of coffee. Coffee's free, water's free, soda's a dollar, monsters a dollar, 250. It's nice, it's convenient. Sorry, I'm gonna show them the bathroom. You don't mind, do you? You guys gotta see this. Hold on, hold on. You come here. Put a lot of investment into this. Table service. You sit down over here, you get an iPad, and uh, you just order what you want right to your table. It's very, very classy. Let's get that. Yeah. This is how you basically jump on there. Vapeworks e cigarettes. You, you have your own iPad at your table. Oh, this oh, that one didn't work. That's the scan. This is the. Oh, okay. Look at this. You're sitting over there and you order up what you need on your own custom tablet right there at the table. Scroll through the juice. All the pricing is listed on there, too. Very reasonable prices here. Okay. Big shout out. These guys invested big time to be here in this place, too. So enough said about that. Before I get into my build workshop, let me open up chat and see who's hanging out over there. It's going to echo for a second until I turn it off. What's that? Anybody in chat? Who's in chat? Smitty, if you want to jump in. You know what I'm going to do? I feel like having some people on here with me today. Let me get the link, and I'll put it in chat. If you want to jump in live, come on in. Not, not, that's cool. If you want to just hang out, kind of observe. But uh, if you want to jump on, feel free. Let's go. Um, 
echoing a little bit. But let me talk about the expo, the Carlisle PA, Central PA Expo. I just came back from the weekend up there. It was awesome. Now, it wasn't the biggest venue. It didn't have hundreds and hundreds of vendors. But what it did have was a bunch of vendors um, from as far away as Utah and um, in California. Uh, Ruthless was there, which was really cool. But it also had a lot of local smaller vendors with very good juice lines that I hadn't come across before. A lot of great deals on mods, a lot of great deals on hardware. Um, the guys who designed the Goliath RDA were there from Utah. Uh, I forget the name of that. I have that card somewhere, but they had that Goliath RDA for 90 bucks. It usually costs like 150. Anyway, I picked up some cool stuff. This is a vent bag. I'm going to annotate down below. This is a, a vape bag that I can also put my computer, my laptop in. And I condensed three bags down into this thing. And it, yes, it does have individual stuff inside here just for vaping where you can put mods, you could put batteries. It's got a million little folds and crenellations and pockets and all kinds of stuff. I saw my buddies over there at Tally Ho. I got myself a couple of 125s. I buy this stuff. I don't mooch juice. I, I buy this stuff from there. This is an all-day vape for me, dolomite. Uh, I must have this in my life. So... I stock up. I got my favorite vanilla custard, the general from Epicus Nebula. And you know, these are like 25 bucks, 30 bucks for big bottles like this when you go to shows. So if you ever have opportunities to go to these expos, it, 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 you gotta go to these expos. They're worth driving the miles and going to. I, I was getting batteries for five bucks each for Samsung 25 hours from Good Guy Vapes. Um, May Village wholesalers, I got a, IPv2 for like $52. Um, I don't need an IPv2, but I got one anyway because it was so cheap. And now I'll review it after everybody else reviewed the D2. What else can I say? Um, other cool stuff I have going on right now. Uh, I should show you this. Yeah, see this tank? Yeah, let me take that off. <laughs> it's uh, It's got magnets. I'm about to, when I finish editing, this is the X-Links from Yocan. Yeah, it looks like an Ego One, but it's not. The tank, the coil can handle anywhere from, oh, hey, buddy. Welcome to the show, man. But that that's a good starter and a good vape for a beginner vapor. And then if you want to move up, you just pop that off there and put it on uh, a higher power mod and you can rock that. I rock this up to 107 watts without having to buy a new tank. That's pretty cool. That's from Yocan. Let me say hello to uh, who just joined us in here. Douglas, nice to meet you. What's going on, buddy? How are you, Daryl? Fantastic. Fantastic. Looking good, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where are you based out of? Uh, right now, I'm in uh, Deer Park. Oh, okay. Local guy. Oh, wait. You look familiar. Oh, okay. I've met you before. Yes, you have. What's going on, buddy? Not tell much. us a little. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you have uh, as far as involvement in vaping and what you're vaping on. Uh, right now, I'm vaping on a Snow Wolf uh, 200 watt with a Crown tank, temp controlled, uh, 90 watts, 650 degrees. I kind of like it like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, running a, a local vapor. Uh, Juice maker uh, Michael uh, Anzalong doing a little bit of convict. Uh, really uh, love that juice. Uh, uh, in the vaping game, you're sitting in my place right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes. yes. <laughs> what do you think? How, how'd we do? Uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, wow. What a what a tremendous build out here. Very nice. Thank you. I, I appreciate. I'm very humbled. Thank you. Yeah, so I got a nice, cool luxury spot to hang out at. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So one of the reasons I started doing this live show is I, I was doing this in vape shops, just teaching people how to build. It's not to say that the, the folks at the vape shop can't do it. They, they're doing it all the time. They, they just get busy. And then when I was there and they were swamped and somebody needed to build, I would just build for them. I, don't, I, I have a profession. I don't need money to build. But I, I noticed that a lot of folks either needed to learn 
how to build, how to build better, or were interested in learning how to build. And, um, you know, it just became a local thing. And I figured a few months back over the summer, why don't I make it national and international? And people watch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, aside from like you're on with me, but, you know, there will be viewers. And then it goes to my YouTube channel and people go back and watch the replay as they discover my channel if they think I'm interesting to watch. Yeah, I always catch you on YouTube. Thank you. I, I do, I do. Uh, you guys have, uh, there's a bunch of guys that come on with you. You guys have a nice little <laughs> banter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's some very. My, my Saturday morning, I, I kind of get a kick out of it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very cool. So today I was just going to do a basic build, nothing fancy, nothing special. Um, the last couple of weeks I spent doing uh, some RTAs. The Goblin Mini is very popular, so I built that out. Uh, the Billow 2 ver uh, Nano from uh, EH Pro, I built that last week because they're very popular, they're quality, and people have been buying them, and they, they keep asking me, how do I wick it? How do I build it? So I did those videos. But now I want to go back to basics and just do a basic build on the... Uh, Something easy and easily attained, not an expensive RDA, the, uh, the Alliance RDA from Vaporgate and Fogwind. Doug, usually if nobody's on here with me, I just nerd out and build and put the camera down and no somebody's... No problem, I got you on. Okay. And then this way people get to see not just uh, the finished product like you could see in any number of videos on YouTube, but the between from A to Z. What are those steps in between it? I always get hung up on and miss. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to drop the camera down and, and go right into this build and do my thing. Sure. But tell you what, feel free to ask questions and comment if you, uh, if you could help me out like that. Just uh, anything along the way, keep the, in, the conversation going. I will. One cool thing I did get also at the show from May Village Supply was uh, this Coil Master kit. I finally broke down and got one of these. Yeah. I, I've been touting the uh, praises of, of the Coil Master since January, and I was trying to uh, I was trying to shame these guys into giving me one of these, but they wouldn't. <laughs> I don't rate high enough on the scale, but. I finally bought one, very affordable, less than 50 bucks. You got all your tools that you need specifically for vaping. And, uh, and I literally didn't have to add anything or subtract anything from this kit, including it came with a nice 10 foot roll of uh, 24 gauge Canthal, which I'm going to use. I think we actually carry a version of that. Coil Fantastic. Yeah. Such a game changer. So worth it to own this. All right, I'm. Uh, well, I'll stay. I'll stay up over here while I do my coils. So what's been new with you? Not much. Just continuing to uh, highlight good products I come across. A lot more juice reviews lately. I started to do something a little bit more intelligent on my channel, which is a juice review and a giveaway. And then uh, starting to combine that with a little bit other platforms of social media like, okay, here's the review, watch that. And then the giveaway is going to be, you got to go to Facebook and like my page and comment there. Or you got to go to Instagram and comment over there and hashtag the juice company. Right. To, so like, okay, I love to give away free stuff and people love to get free stuff, but work for it a little bit, nothing complicated. Right. And that seems to be going nicely. I don't want I don't want to just be on YouTube. I want to have other platforms that people get to see my stuff. And um, I know but by far, go ahead. What's that? As a review, no, no, go ahead. I was uh, as a reviewer. I know it's probably not in your forte to just say you know who do you like most, but do you have a fave that you or somebody particular that you're kind of you're liking. Um. 
Yeah, I got I got a handful of folks that I follow. Like whenever they put a video out, I like to watch it. Obviously, uh, I do watch Rip Tripper for a number of reasons. Like him or not, he is the biggest reviewer on YouTube, and I like to see what he's doing. Has he changed his style? Has he innovated? He, he I, I get a kick out of his uh, personality. Um, took me a little while to get used to it, but uh, but that's okay. And and I was learning to build by watching all of his old earlier videos about building. Uh, indoor smokers, another guy. Now he's never touched the coil in his life. I'll say that, but uh, but I learned a lot about vaping from watching indoor smokers. So I, I get a, a chuckle whenever I get to watch one of his new videos. Uh, Twisted 420. You know, it's, at this point, I know how to vape. I know what I'm doing. It's not to learn. It's more the personalities of these guys and gals. Matt and Vanessa suck my mod. Really enjoy their channel from early on. Um, I'm on shows with Mark Vape and Fagan, so I like to watch their stuff. Yeah. And then, um, and then uh, Matt, uh, Mike Vapes, and uh, and Brian Vapor Chronicles. Those guys are uh, I, I like to watch. They get they get like the leading edge new stuff, and they get the videos out quick. Like you'll never see those those guys sleep, and they put out a lot of videos, and and they they don't do just like one video a month. They get new stuff out there as soon as it comes in. So they, they kind of have like, I think, the 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 leading edge racy uh, channels where you could see all the new stuff coming out, the DNA right. 200s, all the different kinds that are coming out, so. Right, right. I just started, uh, I never was a big uh, fan at first, but I, as of late, I've been watching uh, Green, Grim Green. Grim Green, yep, yep. Yeah, I like you know he's got the tattoos and the ear gauges and the piercings and stuff. So in the beginning, I mean, I'm a I'm a, a banker and a, and a finance guy, and I didn't identify with the look, but but the knowledge is what I identified with, and uh, and just also you know guys like that have been around for so many years, serving the community before I knew what vaping was, uh, with advocacy, with going around and building up these events when events were very tiny. Um, so that's cool. In yeah, juice. he's good. Who do you like? What do you like for juice now? What, what do you? What? Do you <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Uh, no, nah, my my favorite profiles are custards, and dessert flavors that are creamy or custardy. Um, I don't go much for the for the really bold fruity mixes like watermelons. I'm not into the the raspberry stuff. The tarts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I typically rotate between a few of my favorites and I switch it up to not get sick of them. Yeah. Vaping with flavors with the palate, you have to cheat on your on your favorites. <laughs> Hold on. I so uh, when we get uh, when we get samples now, I used to have a very bad habit. I shouldn't say it's a bad habit. I just had a habit of I try not to do that at all anymore. Now I just try to I try to vape everything because uh, I've been pleasantly surprised at just surprising myself with what I may or may not like. And uh, that, that recently happened uh, with uh, Mike. Uh, uh, I was pleasantly surprised with all the flavors. One of them was the uh, strawberry champagne uh, orange kind of like blew my socks off. It wasn't typically something that I would vape, but because I gave it a shot, I was blown away. <laughs> I can't stop now. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Sh strawberry, champagne, grape, and currant? I think it's a yeah, No grape, it's the currant. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very, 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 uh, very good flavor for me. I, I would have never vaped it. You know, I would have never, if I would have looked at the flavor profile, I would have said, eh, you know, not, not me, you know, champagne and strawberry. <laughs> Interesting. I love being surprised by juices. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, it's a new thing for me, just trying flavors that I wouldn't typically try, you know, outside the box. Sure. I'm going to drop this down. Who do we got over there? 
Oh. <laughs> I mean, Grim, I just, Grim just put it on. I see. Can you mute that? He's going to get feedback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So here's me in the screen, and then there's me on Grim's screen. That's kind of confusing. Oh, that's cool. That was a good idea there, Grim. <laughs> All right, I'm going to drop this down. Very comfy counters you have here. Just a simple... I think I did a six wrap, 24 gauge, nothing fancy, which is exactly why I'm doing this, to show folks that building is not fancy, very easy. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. Exactly. Would you use Canthal? Yeah, just regular Canthal. I have I've, got, <laughs> I've got some titanium. I've got stainless steel. I've got some rugged wire, which is a beast to work with. But it's fun. This is uh, it's very low resistance. It's stainless steel, and it's very springy. This is this is a five wrap twenty two gauge, and it's a point oh three. It's crazy. Uh, what box? Oh, that's um. This is by Subbox Sins. Triple twenty six six fifty. Par parallel. Thank you. That's that's how you rock a point oh three safely with plenty of. You know, you, you're in parallel. You're dividing the amp draw amongst three batteries. Exactly. That's how you carry a workload like that. It's yeah. like get, getting a pickup truck to pull your 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 wagon instead of a Corvette. Drop that down a little bit. Okay, there we go. So, Doug, how long have you been vaping? Two and a half, maybe three, uh, closer to three years. Closer to three years. I was, uh, you know, I was one of those closet smokers. I quit, but didn't really quit. <laughs> you I know, hear you. Smoking with the hand out the window, yada yada yada. And I started, uh, you know, my, with the cigalikes. Uh, that's basically how I started. Gotcha. Yeah, it just gets inside you real quick when you see how you can quit a habit that pretty much dominated more than half of my lifetime. Yeah. I just recently uh, went for a full checkup, uh, lung x-rays, the whole, the whole mind. Clean as a whistle. No kidding. Awesome. Yeah, clean as a whistle. How many years did you smoke? Uh, oh God! I, I want to say about 15 years. Yeah. 15 years. You know, typical peer pressure when I was younger. You know, other kids smoked, wanted to be part of the club. Sure. I went to uh, Merchant Marine Academy, New York Maritime. So, I was 17 years old. That was it's, it's college. It's not real military. It's kind of quasi. But uh, I'm 17. I'm trying to act like uh, like a more mature than I really was. And uh, everybody was smoking. And uh, yeah, give me one of those. And then it went to oh wow, I'm, nobody's around, and I need cigarettes. I guess I'm gonna go buy some. We were buying cartons of cigarettes for five bucks. From the ship store when we were out at sea, so like you couldn't afford not to smoke. And at every country, and it's boring when you're out at sea. It's nothing yeah. to do, and you kind of like regulate your time in, in increments of my next cigarette. Right, 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 right. I think the I think the funniest thing for me was, 
you know, when you first start smoking, it's like you really, really, really have to push through to like smoking. I mean, nobody ever picks up a cigarette, first cigarette, and they just, you know, oh, where has this been? You know, like <laughs> you, the first drag you take is it's killer. It's what the what? Is, what am I doing? You know, you literally have to push through. To a certain point, uh, you know, and probably a few weeks of smoking before you can actually, I guess, get to a point of enjoyment, you know. I, I always look back at that and go, you know, that's almost just a, an equation. It's like smacking your head with a hammer, <laughs> you know. You have to do it for a long time in order for you not to bother you. <laughs> like, but why do we push, why do so many people just push through to smoke? I just, it's so odd. I think I was embarrassed the first time I smoked and I coughed and turned like green and yeah. and then I, I wanted to go practice by myself so the next time if it ever came up you know casually I wanted to be able to grab a cigarette and and not cough my balls off and um <laughs> yeah so by the time I had practice guess what I was hooked but you never consciously think this is the moment the threshold I'm going to cross right 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 <laughs> and then once you cross that threshold it's got you it's got you. Now, you. now you're hooked. Oh, yeah. I was watching uh, Vaping Minuteman. Very nice guy out in Pennsylvania. He has a show. He has a YouTube channel, and he did a show last night, and he had a couple of military and prior military guys on there. Um, you had Vapor Vets, uh, Dennis on there, and they were talking about smoking in the military and how it's just so common, so available, and just the thing to do like like you, know, you never and then and then there you go a lifetime of uh of habit costly habit and then uh the health effects so those those guys were talking about different things that can be done and groups to support like folks in the military getting off cigarettes you know we have juice for troops out here in long island there's vapor vets there's a couple other organizations that get vaping stuff out because cigarettes are so easy every ship store has it every Military PX and commissary minus the taxes. So, they don't uh, have but vaping stuff yet. I think they have like you know the cigar like stuff, but they don't have the good stuff, the the effective stuff. So really, wow, so, that's horrible. Yeah. That that that's that's really that's a shame. That's so a shame. Takes organizations and guys like that, gals like that, helping out and and getting setups out, juice out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a cool, it was a cool show. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad Robert did that. It's Vaping Minuteman's channel. I'll tell you what, you know, you asked me a really awesome question before, Doug. Which channels, which reviewers, who do I like to watch? And I, I started off with the big guys and gals, but you know, everybody knows, everybody knows those folks. And uh, oh, I forgot to mention. Ruby Roo and Tia Vapes. Not to not to uh, only be like totally guy dominated in the industry. There's some wonderful gals out there, but I also like some of the smaller channels, the newer up and coming reviewers because they are fresher. It is new. It is it is exciting. They're they're not as perfected and polished, and I like that. And they also they're also not going after necessarily the biggest stuff out there. They're they're finding some gems. And uh, I just kind of like, I always liked when I saw actors and actresses in movies early on when they were young and like, that person's talented, they're going to go far. And then you see them in huge films and they're, start, they're like the headliner down the road. You're like, I knew it. That guy or that guy was going to be big someday. I like to watch and see who's, who's going to be, who's got, who's sticking with it and doing the work. Right. Who's, who's got a heart and a passion for it. I don't care about the details. I don't care about the goof ups. We all do that, but um, that's what makes it interesting. Yeah, and this is not a professional, you know, thing. It's not no no none none of these none of the folks in vaping on YouTube had like professional editing software and skill sets that came with it. Um, that's what we like about it. So I like to watch the smaller folks also who are up and coming and. Try and get them on my channel and doing something collaborative before they get huge and and uh, and a swole head. I have an interesting question. Sure. So at some point in time, you know, Daryl, you, you're a great reviewer. You do some great work in the industry. 
I mean, at some point in time, as you start to garner a better name and you get bigger and so forth and so on, do you feel that there is some manipulation upon vendors that actually produce products that try to push their product upon you? Of course. Of course, to any extent, large or small. Um, you know, we can only speculate. Here's what I'll say. I don't really care, you know, as far as if I'm watching a reviewer, whether they, I hope they were paid. I wish they were paid because they're putting the time and effort in a 15-minute video. That's my point, right. I mean, that's endorsement. That's, that's like, Michael Jordan isn't giving back the money either to Gatorade. And, and he didn't win championships <laughs> drinking Gatorade. He, so, you know, Spree, Latrell Sprewell is, wasn't uh, eating McDonald's when he was running with the Knicks and getting into the playoffs that one season that I, I still remember back when they were in their prime with Patrick Ewing. Um, but uh, as far as is their manipulation, listen, these comp China, they're manufacturers. They want to get product out. They don't, they, they have a goal, that's to manufacture and sell. Um, they would love for, and it doesn't make them bad, that makes them manufacturers. So we all have to take everything with a grain of, uh, grain of salt. Um, you know, I have, I have companies send me products and sometimes they're festering turds and they go right in the bucket, the bucket of shame. I'm not going to do a video because why would I promote something that I wouldn't buy and that's bad. But at the same time, I don't like to do negative review stuff so like if I haven't reviewed something it's either because I didn't buy it and I don't have the money to buy it or, or I didn't like it and I'm, I'm not going to tell you to buy it and nobody's paying me and I don't care because you know what they can't pay me here's why I vape because I smoked for 26 years and here's why I do reviews because vaping changed my life and means so much to me so nobody's going to come along and offer me I, and I have a career and I earn an income and I don't need any manufacturer to sponsor me, promote me, support me. I'm doing my own thing on my own. Now, if they have a great product, I'll, I'll put it on my channel. If they, I haven't been paid yet, I would love for some of these companies. I don't think it works that way. I don't think they, like, I think they'd be wasting their money because there's plenty of smaller reviewers that are eager to get their hands on something just to not have to buy it and put, and listen, no one reviewer sells the nation. I think in a multitude of counsel is wisdom. I think um, if I want to buy something, I got to watch five, ten videos before I spend my cold, hard, earned cash. Um, right, right, right. I agree. I agree. I, you want to hear something funny? And I don't mind telling this story. I did. I had an experiment. This one company sent me this tank out of China, and back in April, and I was like, "All right, send me over." Who? I was so tiny back then. Nobody was sending me any good stuff. I have probably about 75 to 100 videos that are private on YouTube that I only put on there for the manufacturers that sent me shitty products that I hated and I gave them a video that said here's why your product's shitty. Um, but anyway this company named UL sends me this crown tank and I got it and I was like holy shit this thing's good wow and the more I used it I was like this is great. <laughs> and six months later the only thing that came close to this is the Triforce. The Triforce. Oh, yeah, Matt's got it right here. The Triforce. We carry the Triforce. I know you do. That thing is a beast, and I'm still getting to know it very well, and it's only been a week, week and a half, and I say that one holds its own in class. Um, but, yes, yeah, so this company sends me out this product. Nobody ever heard of UL. Well, that's okay. Nobody heard of Quest for Vape either. I did this review video, and I said, I can't be the only guy on YouTube that has this product to review. Right. So I'm like, and they're like, oh, can you introduce us to Rip Trippers and, and Twisted 420 and the biggest names in the, I was like, yeah, I'd love to, except they don't know who me, and they're not calling like Little Fisher uh, Daryl over here in Long Island, I, and I, I <laughs> sent emails to everybody, and it was no response, or a couple of people were pretty cool, and they were like, my schedule's booked, I'll, I'll talk to you in August, and I felt like a salesman get, getting spammed out, I was like, all right, I got an idea for you guys, what makes a louder noise? one man standing on a mountain yelling at the top of his lungs or a thousand people in a crowded room whispering. Yeah. I said start getting these these tanks out to people who are eager to put a video and and the the ground what it, the grassroots ground swell effect will take and it took months but now it's all you hear about is the crown tank. Yeah. It is a, it's a great piece. I actually uh, I'm 
very, very happy with this tank. I've had the Magnus, the Star, you know, the, the Arctic, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, there's a plethora of products out there. And, you know, everybody has their, their likes, their dislikes or whatever. So, you know, I'm not a reviewer like you, but for me, this tank and the, you know, the, the Triforce is just the two best tanks that I think I've ever had. And I'm a dripper by heart. I love dripping, but these two tanks just do it for me. It's about the closest thing. Yeah. You know, it's a... Uh, first attempt, Daryl, at, uh, at temp, you know? I've never, okay. I've never, I've never been a temp guy either. I've always just been straight up. So I'm very happy. Very, very happy. It's fun. Um, it's nice to play around with. And then when you get into setting the profile of how you want your vape to for perform from ramp up to, like, actually taking your vape and breaking it down into a ramp up and then a steady, like, like middle section, that's nobody ever thought of it that way. You just... Right, right. The Vapor Shark uh, will do that, yes. You can, you can do all of that with that. It's another one of my favorite devices, just recently. Just recently. You know, it's kind of a unique experience here for me to be on the channel live or on a show talking with a successful vape shop owner. Thank you. And you've had ex experience with other vape shops before this one. Thanks, so. Yes. And so, so this is unique because we get a perspective of a guy who put his investment into a shop. It's one of those, if you build it, they will come type of things. And... I quit smoking at your shop in Ronkonkoma <laughs> on October 14th last year. I walked in there. I, I saw Steve, and I said, hey, um, I smoke a pack and a half a day. I see you're not out of business. You've been here for a couple of months. Somebody must be buying this stuff. Here's my budget. Explain this to me. And I got a kangaroo vibe, and that was it. And um, So that's really special. And... And the rest was a learning experience, but you're a guy who's put uh, your investment, your time into owning a vape shop. It's not the only thing you do. You're in other businesses, from what I understand. Millwork. Millwork. Wood, like wood milling? Yeah, uh, we do uh, a lot of restaurants here and around Long Island. There's uh, yeah, a lot of you know, like Gazi, uh, Mama's. Uh, Upwards of 150 restaurants. Okay. Very humble mill worker. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Yeah. Do a lot of banks, you know, commercial interiors, blah, blah, blah. Wherever the work is. If I ask you questions that are not comfortable to answer, then don't be mad at me. Just say, you know, that's just, you don't have to answer. But just out of curiosity, and it, it varies anywhere in the country, but upwards of 50000 to open a shop? Even a low end, not not as fancy? I Forget about it. We don't need to talk about this. Upward, <laughs> upwards of $100,000 to open a shop? Yeah, no more. <laughs> okay, so we'll stop there. It's a big investment, yeah. and you don't even know if you're going to well, see... Let me be clear, Darryl, sure. and this is the honest truth. Um, I think anybody could open a shop with any budget. It's, it's, uh, do you want to do it right? You know, that, that's the question. Um, me and Steve, when we first opened Exhale, uh, you know, we took our, our best stab and I think we did it right then for its time, you know, but the game has changed. You know, the game is complete. As you know, the game has changed so drastically, uh, you know, from insurance to, you know, permits, you know, all of it, you know, uh, employees, how you pay your employees, you know, all of that stuff. There's a, there's a lot that goes into opening a store, you know. There's, there's so many different little elements that I think people, when they open up a vape shop, uh, either are or are not prepared to understand what that is, you know, and what the monetary values of those are, you know. Um, as you can tell, in that store, you know, we went to the end degree and Every little aspect in there is expensive, 
you know, it, it was expensive to do. It was expensive, you know. Uh, something that uh, I'm happy that I did. I'm very humble that you know, people are uh, receiving it well. You know. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And um, some things you just don't know until you open up and you learn along the way. You can't ever un know before you get in there. So. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Buyer beware. <laughs> well, you know, from a perspective of, I'm a vapor. I'm a reviewer, but I'm a vapor first. I review stuff, but. I also I'm I'm driven to travel around and I want to I want to know what the experience of vaping is like over here over there in this community in that area with those folks with that I like to see everything I'm grazing I like to see everything that's going on and get the flavor right. for how is vaping down in Miami how's an expo in Miami how's an expo in little Pennsylvania in the middle of the winter it's all interesting yeah so, I just recently went to LA over the summertime and I got to go to a couple of local little Vape shops in LA, and uh, you know the vibe is a little bit different. People were very nice. Devices, you know, there was some similarities. There was some different stuff, but the juices is really uh, a lot different. The juices are uh, a lot, lot different. So, with everything on the market and everybody clamoring to try and get shelf space in a shop, and every manufacturer wanting to be there. And uh, like, how did what's what's the first thing you look for in a product if you're going to carry it in the shop or not? Oh, good question. Uh, for me, you know, I guess I, I would like to say, you know, in the vape shops that I own, I always try to get a device, just like you do. You get a device, you try it out. How does it work? You know, what's its durability? You know, is it really a piece of garbage? How well is it manufactured? It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, whether it's Chinese, American, Filipino. I mean, there's a plethora of products and there's a plethora of great builders around the world that, you know, products. Uh, whether it's, you know, like, let's say, Yeet, you know, the SX, great device. It's very well made. You know, you have uh, Gilbert Manapon, you know, out of the Philippines, phenomenal product, you know. There's guys in China, though, that we know. Ugh, you're like, what have you seen? And there's a lot of the Philippines that are like, oh my God, what a piece of garbage. You know, so I look for durability, uh, ease of use, you know, how well does it work, you know. On every pot, big for me, you know, the fire. It's got to work. You know, it works to pull apart on me, you know, really quick. Now, I've had high-end builders build me stuff, and I get it, and I'm like, yeah, not so great, you know, I find uh, a loom box, and I forget the, forget who the manufacturer was, but on receipt, you know, the buttons in the box fell apart, you <laughs> know, and it's a really expensive piece, you know, and, uh, what's going on, guys, you know, I just got it, I didn't even put a battery in it yet already. Uh, more, more. So, yeah. I guess the number one thing for me is durability. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, I'm a woodworker, so for me, what, what kind of time and effort did you put into, you know, building? You know, there are custom box builders that, you know, they stretch a few wires around the box and they call it a great box build. And there's other guys who meticulously, you know, spin the wires and there's a certain length and, you know, a lot of time and effort and solder joints and you know, prospects, and, you, know, you know, and they pick their products very carefully, they're methodical, and you look at their box builds and you go, you can see the difference, you know, there's a huge difference. You know? Some people that don't know what they're looking at, well, you know, the box is a box is a box. Not really, not really. Right. So, you know, and, and in retail, it's, it's you don't pick your customers, they pick you, they walk in. So you have to, who, who do you cater to and how do you cater to and how do you how do you cater to everybody that walks in your shop? Very, it's, 
very difficult. It's a that's a mathematical equation that I'd love to answer. <laughs> I don't think it's a job holder. Yeah, and you know, it's it's okay if you don't like what I have. You don't have to buy it, and I make the selection that I make. I'm not, I'm I guess I'm acting as if I was be. I've never worked at a shop. I've never owned a shop, but this is how I would imagine. Like, I can't have can't have every juice flavor that everybody wants. But this is what we do have. And, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, and you know. We have people that come in and hey, do you do you have you know Space Jam? Do you have? Well, unfortunately, no, I don't. But so and so does. Well, this and this does. Or you know, I'd like to get a custom made juice because I can't find what I'm looking for. Well, you know, you can go to this place. You can go to you know, you can go to Exhale. You can go to you know, you can go to Vintage Vapors. You can go to they make custom. You know, we don't. Um, you know, that's the platform. You know, everybody's got a different level. And there's an ass for every seat out there, you know. Not everybody's gonna like the seat that you're sitting in. Though. <laughs> True. All right, tough question. And it's all right. It. Don't be mad. So, for the better part of two years, Exhale had custom juice and nothing else. In fact, I believe it was vintage line of juice was the only outside product that you had, and everything else was in-house house line of juice. And then recently, the last few months, Exhale made a change and started bringing. They still have their house line, and now they have external vendors, premium yes. juice lines. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the experience of each and why uh, I the think change? It's really, uh, diversity. You know, like you like you said before. Um, you know. Having the diversity of having products that are out there that people are well known to, and or you know, hey, listen, you come in, you want to, you know, you want to get a bottle of juice, but it's not exactly what it is that you want. But we have the opportunity there to say, well, here's a custom, you know, juice, especially on the menthol end, in my opinion. For menthol smokers, there isn't a, a lot of products out there, in my in my opinion, that you could take a strawberry and a blueberry and mash it up with some, you know, menthol in the nicotine that you would really like. Uh, and the same thing, you know, for, uh, you know, tobacco flavors. You know, there's, there's really not a lot out there for menthol smokers, you know. Uh, certain food flavors, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think the trend is with a lot of juice manufacturers is that, you know, there's the yogurts, there's the, you know, the custards. But outside of that, what can you, you know, Bottle juice is very trendy, and I think a lot of got you know the cereals. Everybody's got a cereal, you know. I yeah. that's why I like uh, serum from Mike, you know, from Ronin. Uh, it's so outside the box, you know, and it's so good for me, you know, yeah. in my opinion, you know. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. I I agree with you on that with the tobaccos and the menthols. Um, because they're so niche, but there's like there's folks that gotta have that, or they're not vaping and they're going back to cigarettes, or and and you know the variety of stuff most juice companies don't have, or they'll just like throw in, oh yeah, and we have a menthol if you're into that, but it's like an afterthought. Correct. Um, meanwhile, most of us had a stepping stone juice that we may not have stuck with, but when we first quit smoking, I wasn't tasting strawberries in any juice. I wasn't tasting all these nuances of custards. It tasted like nothing to me. I needed a tobacco. I needed something bold. You guys had a, a flavor called uh, Port Royal. Yes, and it that's, was, Steve's, that's Steve's. That's that's a Steve custom. <laughs> tobacco, chocolate, I menthol. I still I still have that. <laughs> Every once in a while I still vape. I go back. I just recently, uh, it's in my bag. I, I have uh, one that I did uh, about a year ago, uh, that I just was uh, at Exhale the other day, and I saw Ray, and I said, "I gotta have some dugout." <laughs> he was like, "Hey!" I said, "Yeah, man. I, you know, still one of my core flavors that I still like. You know, 
Well, the, the, brain's, the brain and the palate are a very funny thing, the way they work together. I mean, have you ever had where a smell, a scent of something triggers a whole memory sequence when you were yes. a child? Yes. Like you, you smell fresh cut grass and you have memories of, of being seven years old. Yes. yes. So that's a, a nose, smell, sense, palate, memory. You know, it's, and it's very powerful the way the nervous system works that way. Yes. Very much so with flavors, very much so with smoking, very right. much so with giving up smoking. So like Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, well, the custom side of e juice, what's what is what is great about what XL does is the, the incremental step in the in the nicotine. You know, they could really slowly step down, you know, the 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 amount of uh, nicotine that's in the e juice, you know, so you're really not you know, with bottle juices, it's, I feel it's a little bit difficult, you know, with, with, the, with the steps that you're on, you know, it's 18, 16, 12, you know, there's a four milligram step there, you know, pretty typical. Uh, but, you know, like at XL or, you know, at Vintage, you can, one milligram, one milligram, one milligram over, you know, a month period, you know, I was able to, in the first year, I, I was a 24 milligram guy, you know, and I, 23, 22, um, I'm now a 1.5. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm also obviously, you know, mostly dripping and obviously the heavier hitting tanks, so you're obviously taking in a little bit more paper, but still, it's a huge reduction in the amount of uh, milligrams. So for me, that was very beneficial, very beneficial. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to see that go away. That ability to get to, to at least know there's a place. Where you can go to get that customized. Uh, there's some folks I've seen that just go through try over days and weeks and months. They try every premium juice line out there. They're not satisfied. They're vaping, but there there's something missing. It's not they didn't a, hit their niche. They didn't find their their thing. You, know? and that's, you can really dabble with that at XL and you know and it's interesting. You can really get into you know the nitty gritty of the juice. You, you know there are plenty of juices out there as you know that really taste great, but that aren't really made for dripping. Well, there's really great taste in dripping juice that's really not made for tanks. And that's another great thing that you could really dabble with. You can play with the PGBG levels, you know. You can really get something dialed into what it is specifically that you like, you know. Yeah. All right, I have another question for you as a, as a, a business owner, shop owner. Sorry, this my build workshop, by the way, turned into oh yeah, here's the build I did, and um, nice, in in into a uh, <laughs> let's let's interview and grill Doug. <laughs> Doug, like vaping advocacy, interacting with the the groups out there, and interacting with your customer base. Um, how does your shop take an approach to advocacy? How do you support it? How do you this is something with that I want to really start. It's something that I, I personally, uh, you know, whether it's uh, uh, you know a few of the different things that are online that I uh, either contribute to personally, which I won't get into what I personally do. But as far as the shops with vape works, that is something that I really want to start delving into. Uh, as Grim will tell you, there's he's going to be the guy that actually heads that up uh, for the shop on a you know, on a, on a shop level. Um, we haven't really done much prior in the past, which is actually a bad thing. Uh, there are a few different people. You are one of the guys that we were actually going to reach out to and which is the right and proper way to actually do that for the community, uh, along with uh, uh, Brian from uh, Juice for Troops. And, you know, there's a few different guys out in the industry. Uh, we wanted to do it right. You know, we wanted to do it the right way. Uh, so that's okay, cool. And it's not easy. And yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of shops haven't figured out the right things to do. You know, even even some of these groups would. Okay, I handed my money over, and then now now what do you do with that? And how effective is it? And what do you, what are you doing with the money I raised? Uh, right. Please explain that to me. And I've I've talked to some folks that that have wanted that have been willing to drop. You know, five figures, six figures, right. in on the hands of of like well, where does groups out. 
does it do, and what you know? And and not in a not in a skeptical, suspicious way. Just show me what's happening. Show me what's the plan. What's the process? Correct. Um, you know, there's some folks in our industry who are very knowledgeable about how to just just legislation in general and and how to navigate. And it's not always an adversarial clashing type of thing. You have to play the game. There is a game. Um, okay, so uh, I'll ask you a question. So, like, okay, so like subpoena. Okay, so if I, if we were going to be part of that, you know, as you know, I'm in, involved in the group businesses. I'm, you know, I'm also a general manager in another business. What is what are they looking for from shop owners? You know, what what position are they looking for us to take? What are they looking for us to do? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, quite frankly, as a consumer, like Safada is for, for store owners, shop owners, and, and industry folks, and also juice companies and, and hardware manufacturers, more so than um, CASA is more for the individuals. Um, so I really haven't had any interaction with Safada to know what they're looking for. Um, good question. Uh, if you'd like, I can reach out and find out. Um, I really don't mind playing a role in this somehow. Yeah. Uh, not because I'm a Budinsky busybody, but just I, they, they being, uh, is that near and dear to my heart that I would want to see um, us get involved actively. Like California had to have everybody jump on board. They were under a serious threat of, uh, of some legislation, right. and it's still ongoing. Um, right. And they were on. I would like to see, you know, the vape shops of Long Island, you know, kind of. It does seem like it's a little, you know, shop against shop. You know, it would be, you know, and I understand the business is business. You know, that is business. But, you know, we're all talking about, you know, something that's really getting kicked in the balls. You know, and could have the potential to be just completely disbanded. So. I think it's in everybody's best interest to come together, you know, on some level, somewhere, somehow, you know. Absolutely. Board, you know, like they did in California. Right. So did they do that in California because they're all so nice and get along so cozy in the industry, or because of necessity? And um, and it, and it's it's necessity. Uh, I think I, a little of both. There's probably some guys out there that like each other. <laughs> They're also a more seasoned community, a more seasoned culture of vaping. Yeah. Like some of these shops have been around five, six, seven years, which there wasn't even shops in Long Island prior to three and a half, four years ago, maybe. You know? And this is just going back from what I've been told. Like, so, so the seasoning and maturity of a lot of folks in the vaping industry weren't even in business before vaping came along. So learning how to be a business owner. The only shop that I knew of that I would, you know, was going to was Fluid in uh, Bohemia. Yeah. So, so the the first six months to a year is kind of like, oh, do I get to recoup my investment and not lose everything from my 401k that I just threw into this thing? And then maybe after a while, folks can who own shops can get to a point where they relax a little bit and it's not fighting over one customer or one shop that opened two and a half miles away. Okay. It takes time to build a name, yes. And as far as competition goes, new new smokers walking in, and, and if you have a problem with the other shops in your neighborhood or in, in your town or nearby, how well are you taking care of that smoker that walks through the door? Because that's a new customer that never existed in the industry before, and they're pushing in. So like every day, five to ten new people walk into any vape shop and try their first setup. I think after after everybody quits smoking, fuck you, big tobacco. Uh, then we can divide the universe between which shop gets which niche of the market share. Excuse my language, but I drop f bombs sometimes. Um, there's a bigger picture here. Yeah. There's a bigger picture to 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 like. See, like I I I I don't prefer or favor any vape shop. I love them all. And I spend time, and I try and get around to as many as I can. Um, but like, there's a bigger picture than just uh, me and my market share. And my, and, but I understand uh, survival and business 
and paying the rent and keeping the lights on and paying employees is important, so that balance. But I think somewhere in there, now I had an idea a while back that CASA has these little business cards that are a fold in half and they have all the facts about, uh, about vaping. Uh, they also have a, a trifold like handout that pamphlet, so have those by the register. Every vape shop should ask when the customer gets up there to the register and you're making the, you're, you're concluding the sale, you ask, just like Whole Foods does, would you like to donate to, uh, to advocacy? Pick one, whichever one is your favorite. Uh, and it's that's, yes or it's... That's actually a great idea because, you know, uh, Grimm is very, very vocal about the advocacy of, uh, uh, you know, of vaping and, you know, I think that uh, that's a great, I think that's a great place to start right there. I think that's a great, a great way for people to get really involved. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of advocacy groups and you know, learn learn who they are and what they are and what they do, and and pick the one that you feel the most affinity for. Support yeah. it. I love the way Casa. I once you once you like sign up for the newsletter, they send you calls to action when you need to do something, and they even have it set up so you just click a link. You, you your information's already in there, and then you're just sending it out to whatever congressman, assemblyman, senator, whoever it is that's specifically involved in whatever call to action. But you can also respond and take action in other areas where you might have relatives or friends or travel on business or vacation or may potentially one day go there and you you can't just because you're not in their little voting area um, you can still let them know hey this is an area I travel to quite frequently and I'm concerned about you can get involved because you go on Casa's website and they talk all about that so hey advocacy very important thank you for sharing Doug I appreciate that um, maybe we could get something going with uh, with the shop owners on Long Island. And listen, not not as a means to to, to drum up attention and, and have like uh, how do I say this? Let's meet at the gap at the watering hole and gather like the gazelles and the lions both need to drink water. So when they go down to the watering hole, everybody's got to drink, and then we figure out who's a, a, a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, all right, cool. Um, coming up on the end of an hour, uh, my, my build workshop turned into something vastly more interesting. Thank you for your time, Doug. I appreciate that. Um, anything else for the good of the order? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for okay, stopping. Man. I'm very humble. Thank you. Pleasure. Talk to you soon, man. You got it. And everybody else out there, Quest for Vape, thank you for watching. Oh, before I go, Doug, you still there? Yeah. Something I do most of the time, not every week, but most weeks, is I do giveaways. I'm about to do a review on a juice company that doesn't really need to be reviewed. Everybody knows Kilo, but, uh, but Kilo sent me out some stuff to give away on my channel, so I'm just kind of making a quick giveaway, and the way people get involved is... Let me just get this off of here. So later today or tomorrow, I'll be putting out a review video on Kilo e-liquids, and I'll be giving away this juice line on that video for the review. But something special just for this show, because Kilo is so generous, they sent me some 120s to give away. Now, I could be a greedy guy and vape all of this. I love this. This is True Blue from Kilo e-liquids. This is 120 milliliters. Just for this show, if you watched this nice little conversation that I had with Doug, the owner of this shop, Vapeworks, uh, I'm giving away this 120. And they don't sell this juice at his shop, but it's this is True Blue. It's a blueberry custard, and uh, all you have to do, let me think of something interesting. Here's what you have to do to win this. You have to, if you're not already following Vapeworks, V-A-P-E-W-O-R-X, on Facebook. You guys have a Facebook page? You have to go to the Vape Works Facebook page. You have to like. That means you follow. And comment in here. Uh, I don't know. Comment something. What do you like best about this conversation, what we discussed here? Just so I know that you were watching you and tune in and bullshit just to win some free shit. Okay, so here's how you win. You go to, on Facebook, 
Vapeworks, v and I'll, I'll annotate, V-A-P-E-W-O-R-X. That's the Facebook page for this shop. You go to that Facebook page, and you comment in there what you liked best about our conversation here in the show. And then in one week, I will draw the winner from who made comments. Don't post twice. If you post twice, then you get no shot, and I'll just boot you out. I go through that. All right, nice. Thank you very much, Kilo E-Liquids. Always generous, giving free stuff away uh, to my audience. Thanks a lot, guys. Quest for Vape. Thank you, Doug. Take care, buddy. I'll talk to you soon.